Okay, so my name is Chris Melia and I'm a learning technologist at the University of Central Lancashire in Preston. Um, and I'm joined by my colleague Nick, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Nick Bohannon, it's nice to meet you all. Um, I'm a senior lecturer in mental health nursing at the University of Central Lancashire. Okay, and we're here today to uh, share our experiences really of developing online communities within the School of Nursing. So the first thing that we really did when we, when we sat down and, you know, look for a way forward for Nick's um, pre-reg cohorts was to really look at some of the considerations that you need to look at when developing an online community. And the immediate ones that jumped out was really understanding learners' needs and putting that first, you know, how do they engage with the learning, what works for them, and also looking at developing um, personal connections as well, not just the students and the peers, but working with the academic team and how everybody can support each other. And you'll see other things on there as well, so on identifying community um, leaders, and the ability to actually create sub-communities that branch out from that initial one. And generally at UCLan, most online communities fall into one of two categories. So we'd either be using our VLE um, or social media. Now each of those came with their own set of drawbacks. The VLE, the, the challenge really was finding a feature within the VLE that would allow us to create an interactive environment that students could access through mobile devices and in and really met their needs in terms of an interactive um, platform. The social media challenge really was the fact that there were a number of Facebook groups set up across the courses at different levels, modular level or course level, and nobody quite knew who had access to them, who was administering them, what was being shared on there, so it was really an, an unknown entity really um, in that respect. So it was clear that we needed another way forward, something that could help us provide a, a much more um, private and, and safe environment for the students to actually collaborate with them. And the solution came in the form of Microsoft Teams, which is very, uh, <laughs> it's a good point that on the last presentation, obviously, we had the, the one before the last one, we had the guy from the, the VLE alternative company um, and the questions about Microsoft Teams. Uh, the solution was, was Microsoft Teams. We've, we adopted Office 365 at the University of Central Lancashire probably about four or five years ago. And we'd already explored the use of OneDrive for cloud storage. And Microsoft Teams was still something that was in its infancy. As far as we were concerned, we didn't know that it was really being used in higher education at all. Because we're talking about a year ago, just over a year ago now. And looking initially, there was a number of features which drew us to it. Um, and namely the fact that it really presented a social media feel in its interface. So it was something that resembled a lot of what the different social media platforms had that the students were already using, so whether it was Facebook or Twitter, there was something about that feel. Um, also the app integration, so a lot of the other apps within Office 365, the OneDrive capabilities, OneNote, Class Notebook, ePortfolio system, all of that could be integrated within Teams, which was something that was core. Um, additionally, the fact that you can actually co-author documents and collaborate on them within this environment was, was really, really good. Moving on to the next case okay. study now. So, um, this is a case study based around uh, what we did with some mental health nursing students. Um, to provide some context for that, the, um, the nursing intakes that we have at UCLan are round about 400, 450 students at a time. Now, of those, only about 80 students would be mental health nursing students, but they all start at the same time, and they all do their first year together, doing generic studies. So we had a situation where we had 80 students in a bigger pool of 450, and we desperately wanted to keep their sense of identity. You can imagine the situation, you come to, to learn something, and you arrive and you find that actually for the first year, you're going to spend quite a lot of your time not learning what you thought you wanted to learn, but learning the basics of a number of other things. So we wanted to build this um, identity in our students. We wanted to keep that uh, professional identity there. Your mental health nurse is what you will be. Um, and we had, a, I guess, an ongoing issue with Facebook in as much as we don't... Um, uh, we struggle with some of our students around what they post on Facebook. We have to maintain or help them maintain a, a sense of professional identity. But what we have is a situation where our students were not so clear 
about the way that their social media profile impacted on their professional image and their professional profile, for want of a better word. So an example of that was, um, I don't know, someone, uh, one of our students went off sick for a couple of weeks, and that's a big deal for a nursing programme. Missing two weeks is a big deal for us. Um, but what she did was, she posted her holiday snaps while she was away for the two weeks when she was off sick. Yeah, you know, I guess anybody who's been involved in healthcare education, you kind of do get these things happen. Now, of course, it's sitting on Facebook. Now, we didn't look on Facebook, but we've got 500 students in this cohort, and they're looking on Facebook. So they sent it to someone who sent it to someone who sent it to someone who sent it to us. So now we've got her holiday snaps, but she was off sick. So we called her in and said, oh, look, what's happening? And she said, how dare you dig around in my private Facebook? And this was the learning point for her, and it was the learning point that we could have done with getting to without the pain. Actually, if you stick stuff on Facebook, it is no longer private. And that's the message that we, we do struggle with with our students. So we hoped that by providing uh, a Microsoft Teams arrangement, which provided social media functionality, provided high levels of connectivity, high levels of discussion, but it was safe and protected because it wasn't public. We hoped we might be able to get to the learning point without the pain. That was what we, we were hoping for. Also, there is something to be said for the flexibility of academics. Um, uh, academics need to work in a different way now. We know that. We have different relationships with students. We have different ways of communicating with students. And we have to develop different ways of, of engaging with our technology that, that can support what goes on. So we needed to, to do that. We've got um, academics who embrace technology. We've got academics who resist technology. We've got academics who ignore it and they just kind of go, it'll go away if I open my eyes again it'll be gone, we've got them all um, so Microsoft Teams was our um, attempt as a pilot to, 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 to negate some of those drivers and that was what we ended up with is a Microsoft Teams thing, there's lots of nice things about it, we, we set one up and it was called, Microsoft, uh, it was called um, Mental Health Matters because mental health matters um, and that was the, uh, our thinking about it. Channels, we went for, because of course in Microsoft Teams you, you can create channels. We went for whatever you want. You want a channel on nutrition and mental health, we set up a channel on nutrition and mental health. You want one on sexuality and mental health, we'll put one in there. You want one on um, law or police and mental health, we'll have it. So it was like the Moroccan souk approach to channels on Teams. It was just like loads of them, and we thought we'd get lots of buzz, lots of interest, lots of ownership, lots of take up. That was what we were going for. And the Teams environment is very familiar, as Chris has said. It's got all of the um, likes and responses and things like that. So, well, the benefits that we were hoping for was that, as I say, we'd get this vibrant community, we'd get lecturers that were very um, responsive to, to, to student questions. Uh, and indeed, it did happen like that. We ended up with a very vibrant community, lots and lots of input from, from students and staff. And um, we did get this safe environment where disagreement and debate could take place online safely. Um, we did set up an editorial panel as well, which was made up of students and academics and Chris. And, um, and it went according to our plan. But what did we learn? Well, the Moroccan souk approach to Microsoft Teams doesn't work. Um, we know that now. It was quite interesting to hear someone earlier this morning saying, we never talk about what didn't work. Well, we will talk about what didn't work. Um, uh, it, it was channel overload. Um, although everybody posted everything and it was vibrant and alive and, and exciting, you couldn't find anything. Um, so it, it, was, it, was, it was not the best. It could be hard to find. Um, Student-wise, they, they got involved very quickly, but actually with hindsight, we should have started it long before they even started on the programme. We should actually have started it so that they could set up friendships, relationships, communicate with their lecturers before they started their programme. That would be the, the best time to get this going. We got the editorial panel up and running, it was vibrant, it was full of posts, and then we broke it. We, what we did was we said, you know what, we should rationalise all of these uh, channels. So we lined them up 
this is a typical academic kind of thing, lined them up with the modules that they were studying. We lined the channels up with the modules because it was tidy and it looked good. And the students just dropped it and walked away. <laughs> they just didn't want that. Their view of this was not that they wanted a study aid. What they wanted was a, uh, a discovery orientated discussion tool that, that was um, exciting to use and interesting and stimulating. So, yeah, we should not have aligned it to the modules. Uh, we were able to set tasks and things through teams, which was great. Um, we got lots of encouragement and lots of participation. Maybe the best thing was, though, academics spoke to each other in teams or on teams, which meant students started to get the idea about talking to each other, and they started to um, pick up on this idea about disagreeing online without becoming a keyboard warrior, without, being, without flaming each other. We started to get this idea that there could be discussion and disagreement, but you can do it professionally. Um, and next, we're going to do a trial from next week Absolutely. with the MSc students. That's, that's where we're going next with it, with continuing. So the second case study example that I'd like to share, share with you is actually a completely different scenario because this was, it was actually with uh, Valerie Daniel, who can't be with us today for this presentation. Um, she's a child nursing lecturer. Um, and, and her situation was she had a quite a small group of students, um, third year pre-reg students, and generally I think the group was about 12 in number. Um, the idea is she needed a platform to enable group supervision off-site, so it's through an online platform, and facilitate a community um, with quite a diverse range of learners to have a space really to share content, share conversation, and really develop uh, their, their group skills. And once again, the, the VLE capability really wasn't meeting that, that, that need of the, the group. Now, that, that, ran, that module ran for quite a short amount of time. I think it was uh, only, only a few months, but the feedback that came from the, the back end of it was fantastic. So generally, I think we got 12 responses. So every single student in that group responded with positive feedback. The only negative was that a number of them um, had struggled to enable the notifications when they were following the actual channels within the team site. So that was something that we could address by having a, a more, um, well, a stronger induction session with them in terms of the feature set that the platform had to offer. But generally, the, the positives were around developing that um, community in, in the group of students, having access to the content outside of the, the on-site time, um, and, and again, the group supervision, which they could do through the video conferencing features. So really, really positive feedback, and you've got the word cloud there as well. Um, some things that ring through, supervision, support, group, really strong messages. So we'd like to, to round the session off, really, just looking at some of our recommendations of how we can make something, you know, and how everybody can make something like this a bit more successful um, in terms of an active learner community. And the first thing that I point out initially is regular interaction. You know, it's having that active presence on the community as an academic team, um, and, and you know, just even just acknowledging posts and just showing that you're there and you're supporting it um, as, as much as you can. Yeah, and you need to get the whole academic team involved. It, it was very much around a posting, modelling what we wanted, supporting students, but liking things in, and creating debate. If you're seen as passive in this, then very quickly people just get turned off by it and they don't want to do it. I mean, and I don't blame them. I wouldn't want to either. You have to make it what it is rather than hoping that uh, if you put it there, someone will use it. Okay, and, and even though primarily the platform was something to be used outside of the classroom, there is no reason why it couldn't have been brought into the classroom um, to actually, you know, maybe do some group activities on the back of those, those discussions that have occurred. Um, outside of the, the standard uh, learning environment, if you will. So that's, that's something that we're going to try and use going forward. Yeah. And you've got to manage learner expectations really well. Because when you've got something that's online 24-7, they kind of think that you're online 24-7 too. And actually sometimes we were. You know, some of us go to bed at half past three, four o'clock in the morning, and other people would get up at four thirty, five o'clock in the morning. So, you know, things were covered. But you can't go into it with that expectation. So we had to sort of manage that quite, quite, um, mm -hmm. quite well, really. But, but yeah, it worked. Yeah, and student feedback was crucial as well. As Nick's already mentioned, we did set up an editorial panel 
So we're actually able to shape that experience and make it exactly what the learners wanted um, it to be so that they could actually get the most out of it. Yeah. And then the final point, which is what the whole conference is about and what a good, uh, good thing to do it on, it starts with the relationship for us. It started with the relationship between learning technologist and academic, and we worked together. And it wasn't about, this is a product we can use. It was about, we want to work together. We want to try to make this thing work well. What have we got? And then we pick teams. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And Nick approached me with the challenge first, and then we mm -hmm. assessed really what the best solution would be. Yeah. And thank you very much. That's, that's all from us. If you, you want to connect with us in any way, we've got contact details on screen and open to any questions. Thank you. And thank you for sharing as much as what went, didn't work very didn't well. Work. Yes, it was I your point, that was wasn't great. It? That I was, was fantastic. To hear it. So we've got a couple of questions. Um, I'll take some from the audience if they are, but we have yeah, a couple of that. questions from um, the app. So um, someone's asking, can you elaborate on the types of tasks you set through Teams, and is it possible to add exte people external to your organisation to the Teams, guest speakers, external verifiers? Right. Uh, I will take the. Uh, external one first. So yes, absolutely it is. You, we can now add anybody to a Microsoft Teams area regardless of email address. Um, that's opened up over time over the last 12 months. So initially it was only other, other institutions, so partner colleges, etc. But now any email address can actually be added in as a, a guest role, which you can actually shape exactly what that role is within, within the structure of the team. So that's, that's definitely something you can do. Um, in terms of the tasks, some of them were very simple tasks yeah. because there's this polling thing that you can do in Teams, which is a lot of fun. It's called polling. Yeah. Um, and uh, you, you can just create polls and students can create polls. Everybody can. Um, so some of it was stuff like that, you know, check the poll that's going to come out on Friday and answer it. And that's enough. But it just made people, it's a big deal for some people to post something online. I know it sounds kind of weird, but it is. Um, to, to, the, to the converted, it's nothing. But to some yeah. people, it's huge. I think some of the other tasks as well, in the other case study example, in child nursing, the Valerie set were around um, accessing media content and sharing reflections around you know, views on, on what they'd actually watched. And I know that in your area as well, you were sharing a lot of um, things that were going on in the media. And it was, again, reflection and discussion around those topics yeah. that was occurring on the platform. I think there's just one um, just saying, have you tried the teams in purely online courses? Think that there are a couple of examples, um, and it's something that we've not. Again, we, we're still pretty much in a well, just outside of the pilot phase. We've run the pilot for about a year, um, and there are a couple of examples where it has been used in online um, cases. But it's something that we, we're trying to work how work out how to embed it and actually um, bring it in line with our daily um, and on some kind of integration because we've integrated some of the other applications like OneNote Class Notebook, for example, within our daily. And the team's integration is something we're working on. So I think once we've got to that point, it's something that we can really offer as, as one experience, if you will. Yeah. Um, do we have any questions? Any more questions from the group? No, okay. no. Well, I think just once again, thank our, our thank speakers. You. No and that was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.